Welcome back digital watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches and today we are restoring the donation that David Lewis uh, gave to the channel and we are talking about the Casio F100 Alien Watch. Uh, in the video, in the pickups video, I actually said Seiko F100 and that only shows how excited I am about this watch. I got the brand wrong, it's the Casio F100. This will be a two-part series uh, in part one we are going to get the module going and in part two we are going to restore the case because as you can see uh, the case really needs an overhaul. Uh, we are going to repair the buttons, uh, we are going to do something about this scratch screen and we are going to give it a good clean. So we'll start by uh, opening the case. We have one, two, three, four screws. And we have the module out. We are going to pull the rest of the module out. And there we go. And we do see some dirt in this upper corner, so I am going to uh, take this apart as well. So that is the watch stripped and what we are going to do now is take the board under the microscope and inspect it. Uh, I didn't try a battery in because the watch was faulty to start with um, and I want to give it a good clean uh, before I attempt anything else. The thing I am looking for is corrosion and uh, we can actually see that the conformal coating has uh, come off in this area and you do see there some rust but nothing to indicate that this watch doesn't get any power because I'm uh, leaning on that and here we do see uh, some some corrosion uh, that's what we don't want. That may be the reason uh, why the watch isn't working. It might not get power. Other than, than that, I inspected the board and uh, apart from the odd corrosion here and there, doesn't appear to have any broken traces. Uh, the components are firm into place. There is no play uh, in the quartz crystal. Uh, and yeah, everything looks good on this side and uh, here on the other side uh, it's the same story, light corrosion. So what we are going to do is uh, get some isopropanol or uh, isopropylic alcohol and we'll get that off. Okay, so one thing I did see while inspecting the board is that the microlite had a crack in it and uh, you can actually see it right there. Uh, that's definitely not going to work and we are going to need to change it uh, to a new microlite. I'm going to put it from a watch from a module that I know doesn't work. doesn't necessarily have to be one like this, just something rated at 1.5 volts. Now one thing I like to do uh, when cleaning a board is to take yeah, a wire brush, a soft wire brush, this is nothing, uh, you can almost brush your teeth with this, uh, and sort of go over the problematic areas. Now some people advocate against this because it might be too rough on the board, and the usual recommendation is to use a fiberglass brush, and yes, you can do that if you uh, want to clean a board, but if you are careful, you can use this method uh, and the results are very good. It does chip off some of the conformal coating, so be aware of that. If you have to uh, add some conformal coating back, uh, you will need to have it on hand. And I never go over the area where there are components because yes, this can damage the components very easily. Okay, so now that we have all the parts cleaned up, it's time to reassemble the watch and see if it works.
Okay, and now for the moment of truth. And nothing. So after frowning a little bit, I thought I'd bring out the big guns, which is my oscilloscope and of course the trusty capacitance meter. This means we are going to look at the components on the board and see if one is the culprit. So let's try first uh, and see if we have good oscillation from the crystal. Okay, so I know for a fact because I know the board, uh, this round trace right here and this pad, they connect to the crystal. So we do have two measuring points and that's what we are going to measure right now. Okay, so in the upper right corner, you have my uh, oscilloscope screen and we are going to measure uh, those two points. Okay, so... And we can see that we do have a waveform, but... That is too far away from what we want, so there is something wrong with it. Uh, it's not oscillating properly. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here further because I had the luck of sourcing a working Casio F100 and this was by pure luck. Here it was 300 Ron, uh, which is about $65 delivered from a local buy and sell website. And this one is working. Uh, I took the back off and we're going to put in a battery. And yes, you can actually see it is working. So luckily uh, I have this one to use as a reference. And first we are going to measure the sine wave and see if this one outputs a proper waveform. Uh, in the upper right corner, you have again uh, what I'm seeing on my scope. So let's see it. Uh, even if I'll catch it just for a moment, uh, we're in business. Oh, and there we had it for a moment. Uh, that waveform is what we want. So we know that this one is working properly. Uh, there is an issue with this one. It has not only the crystal, but a few other components. So we are going to strip both out and I'm going to go ahead and measure the capacitors as well, just to make sure we don't have any issues there because the crystal oscillator uh, might, might uh, be oscillating improperly if there is a bad capacitor. Okay, so let's strip them down to the board. Okay, so here we are, we have our capacitance meter and we have to measure uh, one, two and three against one, two and three. We know that this board is the one working properly. And what we are looking is uh, for a difference uh, that is uh, not 10% uh, higher or something like that, we are looking at something that is uh, a few scales higher. So if it's uh, five times higher or 10 times higher, that's the difference we are looking at. Okay, so we have a hundred something against 114. So that's that's not a bad capacitor. 128, 130 against, yeah, 124. So that's, uh, that again is not a big difference. 5, 17, 16 against 3.4. Okay, so now this is a more significant difference. Uh, and what we are going to do now is measure to where that capacitor goes. And if it goes to the uh, oscillator, then that means uh, we have reason to suspect uh, it's one of the culprits. This is the continuity meter. And we'll just have to check if indeed, yep. So it does go to the oscillator. 
there we go so what we are going to do we are going to change this capacitor with a value with a capacitor that has the value close to what we've measured here on the right three something nanofarads okay so you're probably wondering where i get the capacitors so this is what i have it's a set that has multiple values I have a few other in here. You can get these on eBay if you search for a uh, capacitor kit. Uh, and usually you can find them. <laughs> Most of them are from Poland. I guess they are uh, big uh, electronic component manufacturers. So yeah, uh, the closest value I have is going to be 3.3 nanofarads. Uh, we're going to give it one last measurement uh, on the right and just to have a peace of mind yeah we've selected the right value and we are changing it against uh, going up hopefully that is the issue uh it couldn't it, it could be not the issue but the only way to find out is to change that capacitor so first we are going to remove uh the excess solder from well the solder from the capacitor there and there and we're going to do, you do, do that by using a solder wick. Uh, this is a braided copper wire, uh, which absorbs the solder uh, instantaneously if you put it uh, near a component and heat it up. Uh, component right there and uh, before we go we're going to solder it in place we are going to add a little blob of solder uh, on one of the pads there we go I should be doing this under the microscope but it's easier for you to see it like this One side done. And now we are going to load the other one. And there we go. Okay, so that's more like it. Uh, now we are going to give it a good clean with some isopropanol and then we'll reassemble the watch and keep our fingers crossed again. Okay, so fingers crossed again. We're going to insert the battery and still nothing. Why won't you work? Okay, so the next component that we will want to change is the oscillator. Uh, that might be the culprit and that's the last one we are going to attempt to change. Uh, and we are going to select one from an era appropriate uh, I'll try to find one in my parts bin. Okay, so there we go. Look familiar? Probably, probably yes. Uh, here we have the electronics from a Casiotron S20, uh, which I know for a fact is are working. Uh, I don't have the case, it's just the internal electronics. And this is uh, our Casio F100. And you can actually see that these parts are identical. So we have the crystal oscillator, which is identical. And uh, we have the trimmer capacitor, which is this part. And this is used to make small adjustments uh, if the watch is running too fast or too, too slow. And this is actually linked directly to the capacitor. And uh, I'm also going to swap this one because we have a lot of corrosion on the one with the Casio F100. So fingers crossed that we get this operation right and uh, we will have a working Casio F100. 
sorry Cassiotron S20, but uh, I do believe we are dealing with a much rare uh, and more important watch and try to get it to work. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Yeah, <laughs> and we did see a sign of life right there, uh, which is good because it means we have a shot. Okay, so after cursing for a little bit, uh, I actually didn't realize I was using uh, well a spent battery so that's what happens when you have uh, batteries lying around like this and keeping them unorganized uh, you do happen to hit a battery that is not good so yeah I was uh, why can't you see the oh, okay so the lighting is bad so um... There you go, I was using this battery 1.2 versus this one 1.5 and indeed uh, the watch actually works. But it has a missing segment uh, that I would have to take care of. But anyway, this is the fix and uh, it took me three days to do it. So it was filmed over three days. Um, and yeah, that's what happens when you get frustrated with a watch that doesn't work. You're not careful, so you end up using dead batteries and you have the impression that you didn't do the correct fix. So anyway, as a conclusion, um, I don't know if it was that capacitor or the changing of the crystal plus the trimmer capacitor, but in any way those three helped. So yeah, that, that is the fix for this watch. I do have to uh, look at that one segment, uh, see why it's not working. Uh, but that's it for now. And uh, join me in part two when we will be restoring the case. As you can see, the case is badly, badly uh, worn out. And even the buttons, uh, Many of these watches, you can see how the, the, the top of the button, somebody uh, with time buttons start not working anymore. And uh, people, of course, they try to press harder and they, they use uh, sharp, sharp things to press them with, like pencils or, I don't know, needles or nails. Um, so we'll be taking care of this entire case. We'll also be taking care of the glass. Uh, I'll show you how we'll recondition the buttons. Um, that's enough advertisement. Do join me in part two. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next Vintage Digital Watches. Bye.